about three weeks ago, I said, you'll know that there's some tension or a little bit of elbow room when you start seeing background quotes from somebody close to the White House or within the White House who says something about uh, Kamala Harris that would make it clear that she is the vice president. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that, I'm like, Ooh, that, to me, that was kind of like, it was kind of the first time you had seen a little bit of a brushback pitch. And I don't know what's going on internally because you never see anybody. They don't talk. They don't do anything. Um, but that was definitely a little bit of a, just remember. I, I, and also, if I, were, if I were Kamala Harris, I'd be mad. So before we get into the book, let, let's talk a little bit about just kind of what's going, going on, on in the world. It's been a, it's been a weird year to say the least. Um, le, well, actually let's talk about sort of for, your former job for a second because press secretary and Jen Psaki, um, I, I've been giving her a bit of a hard time on the show. She doesn't seem particularly well equipped to do this job. She's always circling back. Lot of lot of non answers. I, I suspect you've got well, some look, a sympathy. Look, non answer even, is an art. You, is, <laughs> and she's perfected that art, I suppose. I but I'm guessing you have view. some sympathy. I have a different view. I, look, um, look, they've only been in office for six weeks. Um, there is a lot you don't know, and that's one of the reasons you would want to circle back. Um, she does come to the job with a lot more experience than I had because she was the spokesperson at the State Department under President Obama. And that gave her two things. One, a deep dive into foreign policy, which a lot of people don't necessarily have unless you've come up through you know, that industry or that um, department. Um, it, you ha it takes a while to learn all of those issues. Um, and she used to get a really hard time from a, a few reporters in particular. James Rosen was one of them uh, from Fox mm -hmm. News. But Matt Lee of the Associated Press he is an equal opportunity, uh, tough reporter on everybody. And they used to have a lot of tangles. And remember, she also got caught up in that whole thing of spying on James Rosen and reporters. Mm -hmm. So she, she comes to the job with a little bit more experience than many press secretaries um, up to, to date. Um, the other thing is, is she has a press corps uh, that is one. There's, there's not many people in the room because they are very strict on COVID protocol. So there's probably, I think, I think there's like 10 reporters total in the room. That, yeah. that makes it for a very different room. Masks also, I think, are a real barrier to communication. And um, even though somebody might try to like hold their mask away, you know, there's this whole thing going on with you can't read lips, you can't read expressions, there's all of that. Um, and the other thing is, I think President Biden is quite happy not to drive the news. And it's a weird thing because I think, well, you have the opportunity. Why wouldn't you drive the news every single day? They seem to have this belief, and we'll see how it turns out for them, that, that they can do their jobs in a very steady, easy way. And I use that kind of phrasing because that feels like the pace of the administration. Is that partly just because the media kind of likes them perhaps a bit more than they like that Trump fella. So, you know, they're not going to ride them as hard. It makes their job a little bit easier. I have a different way of answering this. And I haven't thought of this until just now because I haven't really been asked. But if you think back to the press secretaries, everyone kind of represents their boss very well. Right. So think of Ari Fleischer, Tony Snow and me, um, Scott McClellan. Uh, we had the confidence of George W. Bush. You think of the press secretaries, even though Sean Spicer was not press secretary for very long, he continues to be a part of President Trump's um, sort of orbit, I would say. Uh, the other press secretaries, Stephanie Grisham, a little bit different. She never, she never briefed. That might be a little bit of a different one. But I think that Jen Psaki is just kind of in the approach, tone, attitude of Joe Biden. And so maybe you, what, what you want from a press secretary uh, one, you might want some more answers, always. But you also want to know that what you are getting from that press secretary is what the president is thinking and how he thought about it and how they got to that decision. I think that she's actually doing that. Yeah. Do, do you sense that Biden is actually in charge of this operation? Because it doesn't really seem like he is. I mean, I hear what you're saying. But I remember... 
so many times. Do you remember how they said that Carl was Carl Rove was Bush's brain, was, or that really right, right. Dick Cheney was really the Cheney, one in charge yeah. of everything? It wasn't true. And I, I think about this now. You know, the other day when they uh, did the attack on the um, Iranian forces in Syria, mm-hmm. did you see the news that um, they didn't tell Kamala Harris until after? Mm-hmm. So to me, I think yeah, I think that he is in charge. Yeah. When, when you see something like that get leaked, not that they did the attack, but that but the vice didn't president her? didn't know. Yeah. What, what do you make of like that process? Because it seems to me that there's got to be something going on there that allows that to get like, that's the story in an odd way, more than, you know, bombing a random caravan. I think you're with me. Love talking to you because nobody else has brought that up. Yes. Okay. This Biden team has been the most tight lipped, disciplined no leaks, no backbiting. I mean, people are kind of bored. They're like, wait, we used to get, what happens? Even in any administration, you would get a little bit of that. But on the campaign trail, they were very disciplined. And I think that's partly because they keep their circle so small, but really pretty interesting that even as it grew from the primary campaign into the general election, still no leaks, hardly any background. You didn't get any color. Like, you're like what's going on over there? About three weeks ago, I said, you'll know that there's some tension or a little bit of elbow room when you start seeing background quotes from somebody close to the White House or within the White House who says something about uh, Kamala Harris that would make it clear that she is the vice president. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that, I'm like, to me, that was kind of like it was kind of the first time you had seen a little bit of a brushback pitch. And I don't know what's going on internally because you never see anybody. They don't talk. They don't do anything. Um, but that was definitely a little bit of a, just remember. I, I, and also, if I, were, if I were Kamala Harris, I'd be mad. And then what yeah. you have happen is you have West Wing versus Vice President's office. There's always a little tension there. Even though they, they handled it pretty well so far. And Joe Biden is actually quite... Um, I'm going to say solicitous, but he tries to be very inclusive of Kamala Harris. So even though he is the president, he will say, I did this. And then he'll stop himself and say, we did this. And I think that's a little bit out of respect. Um, And also maybe just his management style that he wants it to look like there's a team and a shared effort. And I think time will tell. It's, It's a little early to say. So, so while you're giving these guys credit on sort of the, the competency of how they're managing the thing, how, how do you think we're doing on the unity and healing front, which we, that, w- that was the meme we got starting on January 1st. Well, really, I guess on the 20th, but really it's starting at the top of the year. It was like, okay, 2020 is gone. Now we can begin the, the year of unity and healing. That was the messaging for a while. We're not really hearing about it anymore, but I, I never felt that it really had any, had any value because we know if the shoe had been on the other foot, uh, this certainly wouldn't have been about unity and healing. And uh, the bipartisan effort to try to do a COVID relief plan that they are now calling the American Rescue Package, um, that was like the whole idea was that we're going to do this together. And pretty quickly, it was clear that Ron Klain, who is the chief of staff, is not for that at all. Um, I, again, there's a little bit of color from the meeting that um, you remember when several of those Republicans, Susan Collins, Romney, Portman, Um, about seven of them, they go to the Oval Office to have a meeting with Joe Biden to say, hey, look, you say 1.9 trillion, we say 600 billion, let's talk. Like maybe we can figure out some things. And Susan Collins, the senator from Maine, reports that during that entire meeting, Ron Klain sat to the president's side, out out of eyesight from Biden, and shaking his head the whole time, like, nope, Hmm. nope. And she said she knew in that meeting, she's like, they have no intention of making this a bipartisan effort. Of course, they would love for, for some Republicans to say, oh, yeah, sure, okay, we'll, we'll do that. Um, it's interesting, unity. When you, in any general election, you can find that a majority of people, a vast majority of people will say they want Congress to work together, to get along, to do the right thing together and move the country forward, and then that lasts for about three days. In this case, it didn't even get there at the time. So it looks like we're going to get $1.9 trillion of spending uh, by a very slim majority of Democrats. 
And I don't think that you'll get I don't think you'll get any Republicans to vote for it in the end. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.